I was playing with my Legos in the living room with my five-year-old son when he yelled, Daddy, something bit me. He raised his hand and showed me a drop of blood on the tip of his finger. Uh, don't worry, uh, I'll get the first aid kit, I said as I rushed to the kitchen to find a band-aid. He started sucking on the end of his finger as I searched for the band-aid. While wrapping the bandage around his finger, I asked him, What do you think bit you? He pointed behind him to a pile of Legos. It was one of the minifigures. I got them from the new kid. It was probably something sharp. No, it's the Lego, Daddy. Uh, okay, let me check. I looked down at the pile of Lego pieces. My son's collection contains a wide range of bricks, plates, and tiles of various lengths, widths, and colors. I saw two new Lego figurines, which didn't belong to Jeremy earlier. I inspected the carpet closely, but I didn't find anything sharp. Hey buddy, uh, which one do you think did it? The blue astronaut. I spot the toy he was playing with and picked it up. I hold it close to my eye and realize that it's different from a regular minifigure. It feels heavier, and instead of a simple black smile, it has a set of highly detailed teeth. Its ink dot eyes didn't seem to line up, and it wears a blue spacesuit with a sickle in one hand, which looks highly unnatural for any astronaut costume. Hmm, where did you say you got this? The new kid from school. He said that I could have it. Just then, a strange thing happened. I was holding the Lego astronaut minifigure when it suddenly wiggled like a trap worm inside my palm. It shocked me and I dropped it on the carpet. With a surprised face, my son said, Are you alright, Daddy? Yeah, just fine. Uh, you should probably clean up this mess. I sat down on the couch and I felt a sharp pain at the back of my neck. It's like the world's largest mosquito stung me to the bone. I touched part of my neck where the pain was happening, and to my surprise, I found something. It was another Lego. This one was a soldier. It had been the same highly detailed teeth and uneven eyes. What the hell? My son and I gathered all the Legos and put them inside the box. I didn't want to disclose it but I was sure something weird was happening with these Lego toys. I don't remember what time it was, but I woke up hearing heavy breathing right next to my ear. I slowly opened my eyes and turned my head to the left. A scary looking man was standing beside my bed. I could see his blue and white astronaut suit. His eyes were huge and he slowly lifted up his sickle. Can I play with you, Daddy? <laughs> I woke up screaming as I realized that it was only a dream. A truly horrifying dream. No! Don't go in Daddy's room, stop! Even though I found myself alone in my room, I was shocked to hear my son's voice from the living room. Why was he up so late? Thinking of this, I got out of bed, came out, and saw my son standing in the dark hallway with a freaky face. Jeremy, what are you doing out here? Mmm, just checking on you. Checking on me? Why? They were trying to disturb you, so I thought. They? Who are they? The astronaut and the soldier. They snuck into your room to scare you. I could feel my heart beating ten times faster hearing my son. Was this all real? Did I really see the astronaut? Suddenly, a crackling sound took place and it was coming from Jeremy's room. What was that? Oh no, they're angry now. What? What the freak is going on here? Being angry and pissed, I opened up Jeremy's room door and got inside. What I saw still scared me to this day. All the itsy bitsy pieces of Legos were flying in the air and two men were standing in Jeremy's room. 
One was wearing an astronaut suit, while the other was dressed as a soldier. Oh my god! I screamed in fear. Both men turned towards me. Their faces were made of Legos. I can't tell how creepy it was. Both of them started to laugh hysterically while saying, Play with us. Play with us. Jeremy clenched my hand and said, What's happening, Dad? Without wasting a single second, I grabbed my son and ran out of the room. I locked the door and could hear marching footsteps coming from inside. Then, the footsteps stopped outside my door. Open the door. Daddy, play with us. Play with us. Open the door. We won't hurt you. We just want to play. <laughs> Go away and leave us alone. Jeremy started to cry out of fear, and I did my best to keep him calm. After a few more minutes of heavy banging, everything went silent. We stayed in my room the entire night, and in the morning, when the lights hit, I slowly opened the door and saw all the Legos lying on the floor, as if they had finally gone to sleep. I woke my son up and said, Jeremy, grab all your Legos. We're going to return them to your new friend. Oh, okay. Where does he live? In the cemetery. What? Yeah, he took me there during recess and gave me his toys. I drove my son to the cemetery where his new friend lived. He took me to a gravestone, which appeared to be all new and shiny, hinting that whoever was buried here passed away recently. The epitaph read, Rest in peace, Tim. You can play with your Legos forever now. It took me some time to register everything. I slowly looked at Jeremy and said, Jeremy, did you take his toys? What? No! He gave them to me. Jeremy, do not lie to me. Tell me the truth. Did you take the Legos? Jeremy suddenly looked behind my shoulder. It freaked me out even more. There was no one in the cemetery but us. A shiver ran down my spine and I asked, What? Is someone else here? My son's face changed. He turned pale and started crying. Jeremy, do not cry. What is it? Tell me the truth. I swear I won't be angry. I like the two Legos, but Tim never said anything when I took them. He was just standing there watching me take him. He was watching us again now. He's standing right behind you. Okay, that's enough. I placed the two Legos on the poor child's grave without even turning back, grabbed Jeremy, and went to our car. Jeremy was crying for the Legos, but I promised him that I would buy him new ones. The fact that Jeremy somehow ended up in the cemetery all by himself scares the hell out of me. I went to his principal and bashed the school authorities for letting a five-year-old sneak out and wander the streets during recess. They said they had no idea how my son got past the closed gate, but after that day, Jeremy never talked about the astronaut or the soldier. In fact, he never mentioned the dead boy Tim, whose Legos he brought home. And somehow, My younger brother Jacob has always been different. Ever since he was about 10 years old, he'd been silent and withdrawn from the rest of the family, spending most of his time in the garden shed, tinkering with father's tools until he got hungry or wary enough to go to bed. That boy's going places, my father always said, and nobody doubted him. Jacob remarkably was good with his hands, and his creativity knew no bounds. He carved intricate wooden statuettes and built little red-roofed birdhouses for the sparrows. Our parents wholeheartedly encouraged his passion, hoping that their son would move on to bigger, better-paying endeavors, 
until he got a Lego set last Christmas. Jacob was never the same after that. In fact, I don't think he's visited the garden shed since. To say that Legos had become his sole interest would be a grave understatement. He'd lock himself in his room and spend hours on end stacking and rearranging the colored pieces until his fingers ached. Hey Jacob, uh, you want to go outside and play ball? Max asked, warily peeking over past his shoulder into the bedroom. Max was only four. He always hung around the garden shed while Jacob worked and couldn't understand why his older brother never went outside anymore. No, Max, I'm busy, Jacob retorted through the crack in the door. Go play with Eddie. That's me, by the way. I'm the eldest and am generally expected to watch over my younger siblings. I saw the disappointment on Max's face and told him that I'd play with him for a while. He pestered me about Jacob throughout, demanding to know when our brother would make another birdhouse and if he could see a blue roof this time instead of red. Sure, I repeated the same answer, despite not having the slightest clue. <laughs> sure it can. I was hoping Jacob's obsession would blow over as quickly as it had begun, but it had been about four months since Christmas, and he was still going strong. He stopped coming downstairs to eat, and sometimes I could hear the rattle of Legos way into the night. Dad and I are very concerned about you. I heard my mother talking to him the other day. Your grades are dropping, and you've gotten so thin your clothes barely fit anymore. But Jacob only mumbled something inaudibly. Mother was right. There was definitely something up with him. He looked frail and disheveled, with black circles under his eyes, and skin so pale you could almost see right through it. What's up? I asked him as he passed me, trudging up the stairs back to his room. Hey, uh, you want to go see a movie? Uh, there's this new one about uh, killer robots out now. He flinched as soon as I addressed him. Uh, no, no thanks. You know, it's all right to have a passion. I called after him. Just don't let it get out of hand. He said nothing, and I heard the door slam. I sighed and shook my head, making my way down the stairs when I noticed a small red Lego piece sitting on the landing. I stared at it, disconcerted. How did it get here? To the best of my knowledge, my brother always kept his prized possessions safely hidden away from prying eyes. I picked the piece up and tucked it into my shirt pocket figuring I'd return it to him at dinner. At the time, it seemed like a logical thing to do, but there was no way I could have anticipated what came next. Jacob was already waiting for me when I got home. I'm missing a red Lego piece, he announced, bursting into my room. Where is it? I recoiled at his visceral stance. Somehow, he looked even worse than before. His face was contorted into an expression of angst and a single bead of sweat tickled down his right temple. He reminded me all too much of our grandfather, who suffered a stroke upon being told that there was no more scotch. I couldn't bear it. I don't know, Jake. I lied. I don't keep track of your toys. His face turned a light, sickly shade of green. I need to find it. Please help me. I wanted to help him, but not in the way he was asking. My brother was nothing like he had been a few weeks ago. He was now only a ghost of his former self. Gaunt, wide-eyed, and desperate. Sit down. I gestured to the bed. Let's talk. But Jacob shook his head. I can't talk. I need to find my Lego. I will forever blame myself for what I said next, but struck by Jacob's shocking demeanor and unwillingness to see sense, I couldn't help myself. I know where your Lego is. His eyes almost popped out of their sockets. Where? 
I held my breath for a moment to amp up the suspense before muttering. Max swallowed it. The silence in the room was almost deafening. Afraid to meet his gaze, I stared out into the garden where a happy Max was talking to the neighbor's cat. My heart was thudding fast in my chest as I waited for his response. What seemed like an entire minute had ticked by before I dared look at my brother, wondering if he was in shock or if he succumbed to our grandfather's fate. But he was gone. Jake? I called, scrambling to my feet. Hey Jake, uh, I was only kidding. His room was empty, aside from an arrangement of Lego bricks on the carpet, each sorted meticulously by color and size. I stared at them, wondering how long it had taken Jacob to do this. There seemed to be hundreds and hundreds. Jake, I tried again, retracing my steps down the hallway. Where are you? No answer, only the chirp of sparrows on the balcony. I returned to my room and shut the door, telling myself that he's probably just run off in a huff and would come back when he felt better. I couldn't bear anything happening to him, but he was my brother after all, and a blood-curdling shriek came from outside. I ran up to the window, stuck my palms to the glass. What I saw will remain etched into my memory for as long as I live. The door of the garden shed was wide open, and Jacob was standing on the latch, his body contorted like that of an old man, and a snarl on his face unlike anything I'd ever seen before. In his hands, he held a felling axe, the one that our father used to chop wood. Come here, Maxie, he cooed, taking small, deliberate steps toward our little brother. I won't hurt you. You know that. Max started running, but he fell over and was screaming bloody murder and clutching his sore ankle. I bolted down the stairs and flung open the back door, waving my hands in the air. Stop! Jake, stop! It was only a joke, are you nuts? But Jacob smiled in bolter. But you would say that, wouldn't you, Eddie? You'd say anything to save precious little Maxie here but I'll put every last piece of his body through the meat grinder if that's what it takes. No, stop! I yelled, yanking the red Lego piece from my shirt pocket. It's here. I found it this morning on the stairs. Take it. I tossed it to him. It landed on the grass by his feet, and he rushed to pick it up, scrumptiously examining it, as if to make sure I wasn't trying to deceive him. Well then, he said after a while, pocketing the piece. Good on Max for not taking things that don't belong to him. I heaved a sigh of relief, watching as a snotty, tear-stained Max started making his way towards the house. However, he continued, seems like not everyone is as civil. What? I began, but he put his index finger to my lips. You have to learn too, he said his lips curling into a gruesome grin. The hard way. He bounded towards me and swung sideways. I raised my arms defensively, but it was too late. The blade slashed through my wrists as if it was butter. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see Jacob holding my severed hand victoriously above his head as pools of blood stained the freshly cut grass. Max stood crying from the corner of the house, but the ringing in my ears made it impossible for me to hear. I had to get used to having a stump at the end of my arm after that. Jacob was taken to a juvenile detention center, and I haven't seen him since. I heard he got into trouble again recently, and was resentenced for another five years. My parents go to see him often. They bring him all sorts of food, clothes and books, but he only ever asks for one thing, Legos. <laughs>